Here we have a carbocation. What is the hybridization of this carbon? Well, there are three attached atoms and no lone pairs. So we would have three plus zero. So there should be three hybridized orbitals. That means this carbon is sp2, three hybridized orbitals. One s and two p's gives three hybridized orbitals overall. So this would be sp2. Here we have a carb anion. What is the hybridization of this carbon? There are three attached atoms and one lone pair. Three plus one is four, so there should be four hybridized orbitals. That makes the carbon an sp3 with four hybridized orbitals. One s and three p's gives us four hybridized orbitals overall. Now we have a carbon radical. We call this a radical because there's an unpaired electron. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Let's follow along with the rule. The number of attached atoms is three. We have three attached atoms. And how many lone pairs are there? Well, zero. There are no lone pairs on this carbon. Uh, this is not a lone pair because it's an unpaired electron. That's what it means to be a radical. So there are no lone pairs. 3 plus 0 is 3. So the number of hybridized orbitals is 3, and this would be an sp2. An sp2 hybridizing 3 orbitals. Uh, so um, when you use this rule, you have to use it literally. When we add the number of lone pairs, we mean pairs not unpaired electrons. So an unpaired electron does not enter into this rule. Uh, and if you keep that in mind, this rule can be used uh, for radicals as well as other types of atoms. What is the hybridization of this carbon? What's the hybridization of this carbon? Work that out. What is the hybridization of this carbon? Well, let's use our rule. This carbon is attached to two atoms. It's attached to a carbon here and a carbon here, and it has no lone pairs. Two attached atoms plus zero lone pairs means that uh, this carbon should have two hybridized orbitals. So it must be sp hybridized, because that involves two hybridized orbitals. We're hybridizing together an s and a p. Okay. Um, now again, hopefully all these examples that I just did, if you're in the second semester of OCHEM, uh, most or all of those should have been very easy for you because again, by this point, you should already be pretty much familiar with this type of rule. Uh, so this was just a review to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, what I want to go over now is to point out that there is an exception to this rule. This rule does not always work. So now I'm going to introduce the exception to this rule and try to give you some examples.